Welcome and thank you for tuning into the Property Market Insight podcast, where we discuss all things property market, whether it's the house price index, mortgage and bank rates, transaction volumes, where's hot and where's not. There should be something for everyone with an interest in property. As ever, my name's Dan, and I'm joined each week by Anthony to take a look at the hottest topics. This week, in episode 12, we'll be looking at the Halifax house price index, inflation rates, comparing lender figures, and looking at the markets within seaside resorts. We'll be looking at a number of charts. So if you've not found us on YouTube yet, head over there and search for uh, property market insights if you are watching on youtube please do remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes i placed a link below this video to a page where you can submit your questions for all future episodes so please do get involved anthony good morning how are you doing this week good morning very well very well looking forward to the um the long weekend the double long weekend indeed friday and monday off that's exciting um might be bugging out of london um nephew's coming up so we um <laughs> nephew's coming up to see london so i thought hey let's spend a day out of london <laughs> um probably we're going to go down to brighton for a bit of seaside action if the weather's good on monday how about you well I, I, yeah i mean i love brighton i wish i was joining you there we have uh, it's a really good time down in brighton when we go but yeah it is, is uh, much more enjoyable if the weather's nice um this weekend to be honest um being a bit of a Star Wars geek, I have freshened up my Jedi Knight outfit. I've polished up my lightsabers and I'm heading down to London to uh, the European Star Wars celebrations at the Excel Centre. So uh, I shall be in London on Sunday dressed as a Jedi Knight, swinging my lightsaber out <laughs> uh, with thousands of other lunatics, I should imagine. So, yes, that's what I'm lining myself up for. Um, so, yes, other than that, yeah, that will be a sight. <laughs> Daniel swinging his polished light, <laughs> his polished lightsaber. <laughs> you heard it here first. Right, moving on. This week, uh, we've got some slides somewhere, haven't we? So uh, let let's kick off with those uh, before we get uh, down the the Star Wars uh, black uh, black hole. Right. So Halifax house price index. Um, that looks quite encouraging. Halifax house prices. The um, apologise in advance for this. The, the force is with us hey! on this one. The force is strong. The force is strong on this one. Um, yeah, it, you know, I, it's with some trepidation. You know, this comes out at seven in the morning and there's always like, oh, shall I be up and um, ready to kind of comment and talk about it straight away? Or, you know, shall I do my usual morning routine, which is probably too much information for people at home? Um, especially watch one video, you know, a bit of exercise. So I thought I would, I'll, I'll do my exercise and, um, you know, I'll probably get pilloried by people for not commenting because, you know, it's, it's house prices going down. It's all depressing. So imagine my elation when, um, I looked at the Halifax data and prices have gone up, gone up and you know, bizarrely, despite all this doom and gloom that we hear about. The Halifax House Prices Index has now gone up three months in a row. Three months in a row. So basically every month this year, according to the Halifax, house prices have gone up, which, and if we look at the, the second graph, just to make the point very clearly, they've gone up, which is which is incredible because you wouldn't have thought that, would you, given what various commentators are saying and what we're reading in the newspapers. Um, so what is, what is going on? Yes. It is slowing, right? It is slowing. So if we look at the annual charts, um, so this bar chart here shows the year on year changes. So that March 23 there on the right, it's a 1.6%. So house prices are 1.6% higher than they were in March 2022. Whereas obviously if you look at the kind of September 2022 figure, um, in September 22, they were almost 10% higher. So that that rate of growth is slowing, which wouldn't surprise anyone because you know, we're reading about house prices falling. Um, But, you know, very interesting, very interesting. And a bit of confusion, I think, between the two main indices, if we look at the next slide. So there we've overlaid the Halifax and the nationwide house price indices. And we've said, look, let's let's rebase them. Um, So we've started them a while back um, at, at 100. And so... They're moving in different directions, as you can see, so far this year, um, Halifax up and nationwide down. Interestingly, the nationwide, that rate of decline seems to be abating, seems to be getting less, um, whereas the rate of growth for Halifax seems to be accelerating. So what's going on? I mean, these are the two biggest 
house price indices aside from the the land registry that we that we follow and they're based on their own mortgage book so the the homes that people have been buying with their particular mortgages feed into their their house price indices um and one's going up one's going down now this they're both really big samples right they're the two biggest lenders in the country but there is some discussion that um the halifax is more focused at the moment on first-time buyers and so that the first-time buyer market is is moving uh, maybe more positively than the the kind of the second third mover the kind of three four bedroom market um where the nationwide um older demographic of customers is is typically buying um difficult to wholeheartedly agree with that because you'd have thought that it's harder for first-time buyers uh, than those with equity in their homes so those who've moving have had a, a big equity lift obviously during the um during the pandemic whereas the first-time buyers haven't had that but it's um you know interesting point to note um i don't know dan what you're seeing on the ground from your kind of customers dealing with all sorts of from first-time buyers up to a kind of second third fourth time movers Mm. We are well. We are seeing more activity at the bottom end of the market. We are seeing um, people that are getting onto the ladder. And now we we don't because of where we are in the in the supply chain. We tend not to get to interrogate people and what the reasons are. But the um, sort of age group we tend to be dealing with are not as old as a mix as as it has been. So these these do kind of bear out the fact that yes, there is some activity at the, at the lower end of the market. Um, Interesting that the the uh, the the rate of decline that the Halifax experienced during 2022 was far greater than the nationwide's uh, rate of decline. Um, so it looks like the Halifax indices are quite is quite agile, um, and the nationwide appears a little bit more sluggish. Well, you know, but but the trend lines, if you were to put trend line against that, are very similar really in terms of the way in which they're going. So if the Halifax is an early indicator of what's to come with the nationwide, then that's all actually quite quite positive. But yeah, you're right. I, mean, I, I hmm, don't know whether I can say this, but we, we have gone through a, a, a quite a sizable global pandemic. Um, you know, there have been quite a lot of tragedies and tragic stories as a result of that. And you know, we talk about the bank of mum and dad, you know, Okay, but the reality is, have there been inheritances that are helping the younger generations to get onto the ladder? Chances are there may well be. So that sort of activity at the bottom end of the market may be artificially supported by deposits that people might otherwise not have had at this point in time. So, you know, there are all sorts of reasons why there, there could be um, uh, more activity at that end and more um, engagement at the, at the first time buyer end. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But yeah, the demographic we're looking at certainly is younger at the moment. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point you raised about uh, kind of bank of mum and dad as well. Um, you know, broadly half of, just over half of first time buyer transactions are now assisted by bank of mum and dad, which could also, um, you know, explain why that first time buyer market is maybe stronger than the the kind of the overall the overall market um and it 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 seems that i'm not the only person um thinking about the, the seaside this week um interestingly mrs trellis of north wales uh wrote in she says dear property market insights podcast i've read with interest um a report from the halifax uh, this week talking about the most expensive homes um in seaside towns and um are there any in wales where i'm from uh mrs trellis from north wales writing in there well we've we've done some digging for you and um if we look at we even we even have a picture so look at that nice seaside can anyone guess where that is answers on a postcard or email or tweet or text or however people want to communicate um that is in that is in wales um any ideas dan where that might be well i'd be i'd be lying if i said i didn't know because uh, i googled how to pronounce it the same way as you did so yes i would say that was patheli <laughs> indeed it is you know it, it when I saw that, I was like, "Crikey, how on earth do you do you, do you say that?" Um, but correct, the 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 internet tells me it is Patheli. Um, you know, I'm I'll wait and see what happens to the inbox, but hopefully that's 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 pronounced correctly. Patheli. So Patheli in Nor in Wales, not in North Wales, in Wales, where the average price 
um, of um, a seaside home is £373,482. That's up 20% in a year. Um, the other kind of headline news from this report was that, that Salcombe has pipped Sandbanks to the most expensive uh, seaside town. Wow. Um, has been Sandbanks near Poole for, for kind of years and years yeah, and yeah, years. Yeah. Um, and Salcombe now 1.24 million, the average price, which is um, a big number, um, followed by Sandbanks, a mere, a mere 953,000, not even breaking that, that, that million pound mark, you know, no longer millionaire's row at Sandbanks. That's apparently. quite surprising. That is, it's, it, it's all telephone numbers to me, these, these big numbers, um, you know, but yeah, good luck to those people um, living in those, those sought after areas. Well, I wonder, I mean, Sandbanks is a, is a lovely area. And again, you, you, you do wonder whether um, the, the, the war in Ukraine, but you do wonder what the demographic was of people living there and what effect, you know, perhaps there have been more forced sales in that area with people that have had to sort of, you know, get out um, and, and maybe, you know, because of that supply and limited demand at the time maybe that's what's deflated the uh, the prices at sandbanks you, you don't know but uh, yeah I, i'm amazed I, I really thought sandbanks would still be leading the way but uh, salcombe you say salcombe yeah that's the place to be it's 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 the new sandbanks apparently um yeah so you know i'd say hey if the weather's good this weekend we should all get out go to seaside and you know find our find our favorite areas um <laughs> for the for the holiday home um for those who are in that market um which is not me i hope everyone has a good long weekend next week we've got some interesting um if you're into data like i am some interesting stuff we have the RICS, so the royal institute of charter surveyors uh, latest survey will be out which is really good um you know stuff from the coalface you know what are agents and conveyances actually seeing at the moment and what are they thinking is going to happen in the next kind of month the next three months the next 12 months and we also have the bank of england credit conditions survey uh, which which is their kind of temperature check on all sorts of financial markets but in particular we'll be looking at the, the, the credit and the mortgage markets and that will give an indication to us on whether banks are looking to lend more or less in the the coming months and whether they think the the spread so the difference between the bank rate swap rates and the mortgage rates is likely to increase or decrease so it, it will be an eye on direction of um of mortgage rates and mortgage availability um so yeah all that to look forward to next week well i think that'll be a, a fascinating uh, a look i can't wait to know more about the england's uh, bank of england's credit condition survey that's a new one on me so uh, i can't wait um well look let's uh, let's wrap that up for this week um all i would say if you are out shopping i know there's some commentators on the market telling you to be very careful with your pennies which you know goes without saying it's been the same in every market you don't want to buy a, a property at any higher than you should however self-fulfilling prophecies are real if uh, someone is consistently telling the market to buy low guess where house prices go they go down so um, find your budget buy at your budget move geographically so that you can afford the best you can for your budget and everything should be okay just buy wisely and make sure you're not overstretching yourselves um, but uh, at the moment i'm quite encouraged by the way the graphs are going but we'll see how things pan out next week so look thanks for joining us today remember to subscribe to the channel we look forward to catching up with you again next week so for the time being it's goodbye from him hey, goodbye have a great easter and it's goodbye from me. Happy Easter to you all. Don't eat too many chocolates.